up and running, I think so, 8 o'clock, Monday morning. Good, good, good. I see I've got the camera a little bit funky here. Our, our rocket ship is a bit tilted. Sorry about that. Might be a crash landing, who knows? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> good morning, gang. Good morning, gang. Bikes, yeah, bikes, bikes, bikes. They're not so bad. It's under control, but... Uh, the camera, if we turn the camera the other direction, the blue bike is there. And pretty much, almost certainly, that's somebody who works at the coffee shop. And I don't know this silver bike. We've seen it more than once, so it's not left behind by some drunk or something. Not at all. Peaceful morning today. It's been a very, very busy weekend. The busiest weekend in Asakusa we've ever seen, I think, for years and years. We're, we're uh, cranking up now. I mean, I say we, I mean the, the Asakusa community here is cranking up towards the year-end season. It's halfway through November now, and any company and every company, they have year-end parties and boninkais, and they're starting to crank up that year-end party season. And Asakusa is part of that because there's so many restaurants and bars here. So it's busy, and the weekend was busy. The ninja people just wall to wall every two hours, every two hours, every two hours. And the crowds, they're doing 8, 10, 12 kids at a time. And the new guys who are doing the, the thing, they scream and they yell and the kids are screaming. And literally, without any exaggeration, literally, yesterday afternoon, on more than one occasion, I'm here trying to do a bit of carving. There's a couple of customers in the shop, Nakamura-san, and she's over there and she turns and asks me a question. And I can't, I can see her mouth moving and all I can hear is the ninja screaming from outside. It's not all day long like that. It's when they do their final denouement scene. So this happens for about five to 10 minutes, five minutes or so every two hours. And the, the ninja classes start at 10, 12, 2, 4. So these scenes, the shouting comes about 11, 25, 1, 25, 3, 25, and 5, 25. We can set our clocks by them. So. <laughs> I know they're scaring the kids. It's still a thing. I mean, I, I nothing to do with me. I just we're observing from here, and they are scaring the kids. Absolutely, nothing to do with me. Nothing to do with me. The vegetable man left a few seconds before I started the stream. I was thinking I should. I saw him there. I was thinking I should start at one minute early, so we could get the vegetable man for those who uh, are into that. <laughs> but I, I decided not to do that. So. Good morning, good morning, good morning. So what's happening today? We're going to be carving. I, I did a bunch of the noisy persuading. It's persuading day, and we'll be doing more here in, in a minute now. But I tried to get as much of it, not as much of it done, a bunch of it done before the stream started so we don't have just a noisy, repetitive, banging stream. So give me, you know, two or three or four minutes more persuading. We'll work on this half of the block, and then we'll switch to quiet crunch, crunch time. What else? Uh, we'll just get started. There's, a, there's other news, there's things to chat about, but let's just get started on this. I know. Ayano san should be showing up at 9 o'clock, and she isn't going to hang around downstairs because she has so much work to do upstairs. We sent our mailing out, was it Friday night, Thursday night? Friday night, I guess, I can't remember. And uh, the flea market response has been really good, and the girls are going to be crazy busy for the next few days, responding to orders, getting things packed. Okay, let me shut up for a minute. Let me do a bit more clearing here, then I'll come back and chat with you, and we'll see what's going on. Stand by. I've got, your, I've got a limiter on the thing here. I think we should be okay for noise. Let's test it here a little bit. Maybe I should put my own mic away from the noise of the hammer. Okay, back in a few minutes.
was asking about the grip mat. Well, I do need still need to swirl it around. There's a stopper here. If you can see it here, there's a stopper on the desk here. So the thing isn't moving that way, but I do need to move it around, swivel it around. So I think I'll stick with the you know, smooth mat, not the gripper mat. But yeah, it's an idea. Hey. It's dangerous, you know, here. I can't really see which ones are to keep and which ones are to go because we've just splashed red. They're not solidly colored. So I gotta be careful here. It's easy, it would be really easy to rip off something that should be kept. Okay, there's lots more to do. Let's uh, let's let's clear this out of the way. Let's clear this out of the way, and then we'll get some quiet work. marks no okay.
that gives us an area we can work on quietly. I see you talking about cones. We have, I think, pretty good cone alignment this morning, right? Do we have a cone alignment? We do. The alignment is so good you can't see the cone. We can only tell because of the cone base. We have cone alignment. <laughs> so. Bunch of questions there, obviously. I don't know. Whatever. Any important, ask it again. Okay, let's get the tools. Okay. Number one tool here, another one. A couple more. Okay, let's get lined up. Someone's asking, why don't I smack my thumb? Why don't I smack my thumb? What was I doing? I had a chisel. What was I doing? Let's mock this up here. Why don't I smack my thumb? I'm standing here like this. I'm hammering here. Well, I mean, why don't I do that? I don't know what to say. We're pretty close here, you know. There's no big, there's no massive sweep. I'm just really tapping these things. I'm just going like this. There's no, I don't know what to say. Why don't I smack my thumb? I don't see. No. What did I do with the microphone? Oh, yeah. Right, all right, all right. Okay. If I zoom in too close, I'll be off camera for most of the work. Let's see what we can do here. We might not get an answer about the paper today. The paper is out. There's two printers will be coming today. You might see them coming in the door. Uh, I know they're coming the other way. Ayumi san is here. She's printing. I don't know. No, yeah, she's printing the Arakawa Hasui little print. This should be finished today. And Sugisan has stepped up to the plate to do some pinch hitting. She is doing the final batch of the November subscription print. We had a reject batch come through. We don't need to talk about names and rank and serial number here. The November subscription prints were done in batch one, batch two, batch three, and batch two turned out to be something was wrong with it and it couldn't be done. So Sugisan is pinch hitting. She stepped up and she's doing a batch four for the November subscription prints. And we're on time. Batch one went on the first, batch three went on the 11th, batch two is out, and batch four will go on the 21st. So they're okay. So we're all okay, are we? The mic is back. It's back. Let's get some work done.
You asked about banging my thumb. This is the place where I'm most likely to cut myself and where I did on the stream the other day. The blade here is quite sharp. I'm sweeping forward. Every now and then I pull back and I brush with my hand. So touching the tip of that knife is something that happens kind of now and then. I'm doing this, I do it in slow motion. Sweep, 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 pull back, brush, brush, push forward, cut, 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 pull back, sweep, sweep. And there's a good chance of banging the tip. And I have done lots of times. I think we did it, was it last week or something, a couple of weeks ago. So I had some notes, there was some stuff I was supposed to chat about to you today, and uh, one of them I remember, it didn't come from me, and it came from uh, John, moderator John here, who I guess I'm sure is here this morning, right? John is here, or is he out at an event? It's Monday, Sunday, John's probably here. John uh, sent uh, the mod, we had the mods, we have a little email in the background with the mods, chat, chat about different kinds of stuff. Uh, John's here. Itani. And uh, John sent me a link the other day. John sent the link you sent about the money, the Japanese money. Can you post that here, please? John had seen a news report about a new Japanese currency. The announcement was made a few years ago that it's time to change the currency. And the big announcement was they're going to use the Great Wave on the back of one of the new bills, the thousand yen bill. But the actual real designs have been now published and printing has begun. They've already started printing these things. That post didn't work for me. Not sure, whatever, let's try this. John has found this link on a news site, one of the news sites that I follow myself as well. And I'm, I, I'm not gonna mention it here, but there's something about these designs that if you're into design yourself at all, John noticed this straight away, if you're into things like design and typography and fonts and things like that, which a bunch of us here are, then you might notice only the first photo loads up. Let's do it. Page, page, page. I'm seeing only the first photo. So have they, is their page broken now? Oh no, they're coming. It just takes time. For me, the first photo loaded and then I can see the lines, the second one. So something, their website is struggling. So give it, give it a moment. Here, let me copy the address of the image that's in question. Here's the front side of the bills. If you can't see the page there, this is a here. Okay, this is a photo of the front side of the bills. Can we see that or is it blocked? And then the second photo of the back side of the bills. Just a minute, copy image address. So there's the, uh, there's the two images, the front side and the back side. And whatever, someone says, wow, nice, the images are what they are. Japanese currency is obviously a very old fashioned type currency. Some of the European countries, they're doing it on plastic. They have ultra modern design. Japan is a pretty conservative country and these designs are very conservative. But there is one huge issue with this. I won't mention it, John can chat about it because he's the one who pointed it out to me So it's the, the issue with the typography. They used a different numeral one for different bills and it's like, what, <laughs> what, what? 
The one on the 10,000 yen note looks classic. It fits the rest of the bills. These are a, a classic kind of old fashioned design. So the 10,000 design with the serif on the one looks sort of normal. And what they did with the 1,000 yen note, it looks like it's a kindergarten picture with a non serif. It doesn't match, just one of our girls working here, Nakamura-san, she and I did the shop yesterday. And her job is a graphic designer. She does uh, you know, pamphlets and, and everything from menus to album covers and all kinds of stuff. She's actually, a, a, that's her main job, is a graphic designer. We've asked her to come and work for us and she says, nope, 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 I'm having more fun doing my design. So, anyway, I showed her this yesterday and she just like face palm. She just face palmed. And she said the same thing, that is, this is so embarrassing for Japan as a country. A country noted for excellent taste and excellent design and, and delicacy and, and refinement. And here they are <laughs> with that stupid 1,000 yen note, obviously designed by a committee. <laughs> so <laughs> and some dude at the top of the Ministry of Finance or the Bank of Japan signing off on it. It'll be an old guy who's 95 years old and... <laughs> <laughs> she just face bombed. <laughs> so John is saying it's too obvious to be missed. What's the reason? I don't know. She actually said, Nakamura-san said yesterday, maybe it's because of the accessibility issues. People that are almost blind or something, can they see this more easily or can they tell them apart more easily? And I don't know. Japan does the normal thing. The three bills are different sizes and there's the braille buttons. They have braille, braille uh, things that you can feel. So if you can't see, you can still tell which bill is which. Or up to now, the old bills. And I'm sure the new bills uh, have the same features. So I don't think it's an accessibility issue. Although I don't know. Is it so the counterfeiters can't easily add a zero and change it? <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> Will one yen be in circulation? I haven't heard any news about that. I don't know. The one and five, obviously the coins do need to disappear sometime soon. I haven't any knowledge of when that might be happening. We're working our way down chisel sizes here. I've started, we've got, you know, a bunch of different sizes here. We've got nine, six, three, two, and one. And I'm working my way down the sizes. I'm first clearing the areas here where my nine will fit. And we're about at the end of that. And then I'll switch. Once I've used up what I can reach with the nine, is it a nine or is it a twelve? It's a twelve. Sorry about that. I led you wrong. I lied. So I finished up with my what I can reach with my twelve. Put that away. We go to the six, and now I can reach inside places that the other chisel couldn't reach inside.
think that might be it for the six. So out she goes, and we move down to our three. Actually, this gets to the point now where I can't see very well. I, I mean, it's all blurred to me at this level. So I, now that we're getting closer to the lines, we are going to have to bring in an assistance here. Don't need a microscope, but let's just bring in my glass lens. Find our location. So now we're down to the final stage. We're up against the line, we've cleared away waste wood with the larger chisel and the medium chisels, the larger gouge and the medium chisels. And now we get right up to the line. The lines have already been cut. So the cutting's already been done. We did that the other day on stream. So you can see it popping away here. We're speaking about the money there, the, the Japanese currency, new Japanese currency that's coming up uh, that, that John had spoken to me about. And speaking about money reminds me there's something I had meant to bring up on the chat today and sort of ask about it, or not so much ask advice about, because I don't think there's anything you can help me with, but I, there's, a, there's a, something that we're dealing with here now at Mokohankam 
over the next few weeks, we have a major, major decision to make. And it, well, we, I say we, it's me, of course, whatever. I have a major decision to make, and I'm really, really stuck about how to do that decision this year. I know every year I have to think about our upcoming subscription series. And as part of planning the series, I do my spreadsheets, what the paper size is going to be, how much royalty we have to pay, what I expect to be the printer's costs and stuff like this. I, I try and estimate as well as I can the different costs involved with the new subscription series that we're making each year. And every year it's different. The, the paper size is different. The number of color layering is different. And, you know, the, the, the costs are all over the place. And then the shipping costs are different, the packing, postage, and whatever. Anyway, I got a big, long, complicated spreadsheet to handle this all. But over and above all the things that I can control, my costs, I can, I can look at these costs and analyze them and change them and move them around and make decisions. But there's one factor that's involved when pricing the subscription series for the year that I can't control is the question of currency exchange. What we do on our subscription series is we, of course, offer what's called, what would be, I think, called price protection. When somebody's signing up for a set of prints for us, for 12 prints, it wouldn't be sensible in any way to have the price change for each one of the monthly prints. So when someone signs up for one of our subscriptions, we guarantee, and it's right there on the website when they sign up, we say we'll give you price protection. The price won't change during the course of your subscription over the course of the 12 prints. And they can choose the currency to pay in. And for most people, for example, living in the US, for example, choose to pay in US dollars. So for them, as the series goes forward over the 12 months, they pay the same price every month. Now at this end, where I receive the money, it's of course different because currency fluctuates every few, every millisecond, whatever the currency is fluctuating all over the place. Well, John's already talking about this, and John San, John San, just hang on a minute there. <laughs> so John is saying, ignore it. <laughs> we don't, we don't do currency trading here at Mokohankan, and we don't run our overall business based on what currencies are. But this particular one, where I have to set the price for the next series, I have to set it in December, and hold the price for the year. Now, of course, I have no idea where the dollar yen is going to go all over the place, of course. And John's point is, don't worry about it, randomize it, and it just comes out even in the end. And that's sort of true, and it sort of isn't true. Sort of isn't true, and it sort of isn't true. Let me pop up two graphs. I, I, I'm really, really, I'm thinking about this and trying to prepare this and get this going. Let me pop up one graph. This goes back to 2016. And the gray bars, the white, gray, white, gray, white, gray, are years. And the blue line is the yen that I receive for each dollar. So if you pay one dollar, that's what I get in yen. And as the months go by, you may see the blue line decrease, which means I get less yen if you've paid. So the red bars are this. I set the subscription price at the beginning of each year, actually December the year before. So in 2016, uh, most of our subscribers are U.S. and in Europe and pounds, which, who, which currency is closely linked to the U.S. dollar. So this basically is all of our subscribers. Look at 2016. I set the price in January, and I expected what happened to be the red, and what happened was the blue. So I received far less money during 2016 than I expected to get, and it was actually tight for our subscriptions. 2017, same thing, but not as bad. I set the price at the turn of the year, and right away, down she went. 2018, I set the price at the turn of the year, and right away, down she went. <laughs> it struggled back up during the year. 2019, I evened out, up and down, up and down. 2019 was John's suggestion, just randomize it and don't worry about it, guy. 2020, I set it again, and down she went. So in those five years, Four of those years, I received far less money than I had planned to receive. Of course, Dave is not stupid about this, so when he sets the price, he tries to leave enough of a pad or a margin 
so that if the currency does toast on me, I can still survive. Remember, this is all happening. I can look at this is a backstory now, but I didn't know what was coming up. You know, you could put a line of best fit and extrapolate it. <laughs> it's future. Where's the currency going? I don't know. Okay, so out of those five years, four of years, we sort of lost on it. And if we had been gambling on currency exchange, we would, I would have lost my shirt. So it, this tells me the story. But then the next two years, 2021 and 2022. Here's what happened the other way around. I set the price at the beginning of 2021 and 2022, and I laughed all year long. We laughed all year long. So these last two years, up until two days ago, <laughs> three days ago, it's great. We have set the subscription price, and we have earned more than we expected to earn. And I've expected during this past year, I would have expected some subscribers to say, Dave, the US dollar is so high, like maybe you could drop the price for me a little bit. You'll still get the same yen. And I haven't had one person say that, but if I had, I would have said, hey guy, look, for five years I took it on the chin for you and now it's my turn. <laughs> anyway, the reason I bring this up is this. I now have to make a decision for the subscription prices for next year. I'm looking at my spreadsheet, which has the paper and the blocks and the carving fees, which are staggeringly higher than last year, and the printing fees, which are lower than last year. I'm looking at my spreadsheet, but what I have no idea is what to do with my calculations about currency. And what I'm hoping is this stupid volatility that we're seeing right now can please settle down before the end of the year. The elections are behind us now in America, Britain is, seems to be stabling out. You tell me. I don't know. If I had to make my decision today on what the subscription price would be, where would I expect the currency to be? I haven't any idea. Someone says change to a six-month lock-in instead of a 12-month. I can't do that. It's a set of 12 prints, you know. Look at the currency. It's, it's like there's 20%, 30% different. I can't tell somebody, get the first six prints, and then maybe the last six prints will be 40% more. I can't honestly do that. I want to give them a lock-in for the full 12 months. So anyway, I'm not asking you to tell me what to do. I do appreciate any comments you've got in here. But I'm not asking the chat to make my decision for me. I will, uh, you know, next month, about one month from now, somewhere in the middle of December, I will make my decision based on what I'm thinking is going to go on. Are we still thinking of adding color to the prints? Those decisions are still up in the air. Anyway. There you go. I just thought this might be interesting for you, whatever. This is the kind of thing I have to deal with. And this is an existential question, you know. I mean, this is not just casual. We may lose a little bit. We may gain a little bit. Our main core business is subscriptions. And this year, it has helped us supremely. The, the staff, everybody here, well, not me, the, the staff people are all going to be very happy in the first week of January because they are going to get bonused. And they sort of know this already. They are going to get bonused un unless something happens in the next six weeks to wipe away all that profit. I don't know. So this year, it has turned out very well. But, but, but. The last thing in the world I want to do is mess with foreign currency. Okay, actually, before I get off this topic, one more thing then. That last image that I showed you, you can see at the moment the value of the yen is, the, the number of yen I receive for each dollar is dropping, dropping, dropping rapidly over the last few days. Now, three days ago, we put up a mailing to everybody about our flea market Matsuri. Lots of people paid. I think there's 112 orders. When I got up this morning, there was 112 orders over the weekend for some of those flea market prints. Those people have ordered and paid. The money is in our PayPal account, in dollars and pounds and, and euros. What do I do right now? Do you see that blue dot at the end?
do I bring the money back now to yen or do I say, no, I'm going to wait a few days because it's going to go back up. If it can, it's going to continue down, I should bring that money now before it loses value. If you think it's going to rebound, I should wait till next week before bringing it back. What should I do? We have to play this game daily. Somebody's saying, a long period of time, it evens out, but right now, this week, I have to do something. PayPal sent me the email last night. You have too much in your account. It's against Japanese banking regulations to keep more than 1 million yen. Please withdraw it now. Is that thing going to go down or up? I don't know. Get an accountant. The accountant doesn't tell me anymore. He's just going to say, Dave, make your decision on this. So ask Elon Musk. Yeah, this is all his fault. I don't know. Anyway, just to, just to mention it, you know, Dave sits here chopping wood, and unfortunately, if it was only chopping wood, I would be a very happy little camper. But my job is not just chopping wood, you know. If only, if only. And, uh, you know, my feeling too, people are saying, look, just ignore it, it'll all balance out over time. Well, yes and no, you know. Something else too, I got an email about that the other day. And after we put that flea market Matsuri up, I think it was, was it Friday night we did it, Japan time? No, 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 it was Saturday, Saturday morning, Japan time, we did that. And I got an email, it would have been uh, yesterday afternoon or something. Someone says, Dave, why did the prices keep changing on your flea market? And they had, I guess they had looked at a print or something on, on Saturday when they first saw the email from me and they decided not to buy it. But they went back the next day and looked again. And the price in, in their dollars they were looking at was different. And it was because the currency changed overnight. And our flea market website follows the currency. Of course, it has to as this goes up and down. So once every day at 12 noon Japan time, the prices on our flea market change automatically based on what the currency has been doing. As I said, I can't change the subscription prices, of course, because that's locked in. But the flea market prices change every day. So you can play the same game yourself if you like. If there's an item in that flea market you think you'd like to get, and you think it's too expensive, and you think the dollar is going to go up tomorrow, you can wait a day and it'll be cheaper for you. <laughs> so. so I'm saying, do I still make toys? No, not at all. Absolutely not at all. But it's funny you mentioned wooden toys, you know, because uh, there was an, was it yesterday? No, two days ago. A uh, young man came in, he lives here in Japan, and uh, he was with his daughter. His wife was out somewhere else doing something. And he came in with his young daughter, who was five, maybe, four or five. They were fans. They'd been watching YouTube videos. And he says his daughter was also watching the YouTube videos. And she was a bit restless. Her dad wanted to look at prints and stuff. And the young lady, five years old, whatever, she was, she was a bit restless. So I had a little bit of a brainstorm. And in the back club closet here in the shop, we have a few of the wooden toys that I made 35 years ago when I was in the wooden toy business. I made some and we've still got the ones that I kept from my own kids. I brought some to the shop for just this purpose and there's a couple of the wooden toys back there. So dad wanted to browse prints so I said, can I, can I borrow your daughter for a minute in the back room? And he's like, yeah, well, whatever, he can see what's going on. The back room here is open. So I got one of the puzzles that we had threw it on the floor for her, and she and I spent 15 minutes playing this puzzle while her dad chatted with other people in the shop and stuff like this. And the puzzle was what we call the Iro Hani Hohebi. It's a snake. We should look at it one day. I don't think I have any pictures, whatever. I don't know. Anyway, she and I spent 15 minutes, and she did pretty well. I think maybe 
she isn't obviously a kid that does a lot of puzzles all the time. My own kids did puzzles right from when they were like six months old or something, I don't know. But she glommed onto it pretty quickly and got going on it and we had a ton of fun sitting there doing this puzzle and dad came in and said, wow, cool, and took some pictures and uh, so Dave got a tiny flashback to his life 35 years ago when I used to, there's kids all over the house and we made wooden toys and we had open house every week for kids to play with the toys. And back to when I was young. You know, Grandpa Dave, so, so it used to be Dad Dave, now it's Grandpa Dave. It's a fun puzzle actually. It's, uh, it teaches the kids who, teaches the kids the old poem. I know, you know, in English we have a sentence. What is it? The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy yellow dog. A sentence that tries to use all 26 letters of the alphabet. And in English, there's no way you can construct a full sentence that uses all 26 letters once and only once. It's just not going to happen in English. But in Japanese, it's actually possible some years ago, many, many years ago, I have no idea, hundreds of years ago, somebody constructed a sentence, quote sentence slash poem that uses all the letters of the Japanese uh, alphabet, all, all the phonetic sounds of the Japanese language. A, I, U, E, O, Ka, Ki, Ku, Ke, Ko, Sa, Shi, Su, Se. So there's a group of, of, you know, of syllables that make up the Japanese language. And somebody figured out a way to make a semi-sensible poem with these. And it's called the Iroha. You can look this up on Wikipedia or something. Iroha. And it's a poem using all the characters of Japanese. So Dave here made a puzzle with all of these things. One puzzle piece is shaped like I, one is Ro, I, ro, ha, hi. So they're, they're all, there's, there's all the puzzle pieces on the floor. And they're all a different shape so that they only go together one way. So even a little girl like this who doesn't read Japanese can't solve it by reading the poem. She can solve it by looking at the shape of each piece. We're not talking about classical jigsaw puzzle. We're talking about zigzag pieces. The poem was 256 pages long. I don't think so. The German IRL streamer who was visiting Japan. I, uh, I'm hearing this for the first time. I'm sorry, if he contacted me, it may have gone into spam. I don't know. I'm sorry. I don't know. I would happily, if he was here at night or something, coming along the street, if he had contacted me, I would happily have come down and... and uh, chatted with him on his stream, but I didn't, uh, I didn't hear such a notice, I'm sorry. Puzzles. I had dozens and dozens and dozens of puzzles. It was a little business, the Woody Friend Toy Company. <laughs> it makes sense in Japanese. He was in front of the store because it was closed. Well, I'm sorry, I don't know. Like I said, if I had heard, or if anybody's in this situation, of course, call me. Or he could have just called upstairs. Dave, are you up there? Because my window's open. So if he was in front of the shop, and if he had called Dave, I would have heard him through the window if, if I was there. Oh. It's not cut. Look at this, here I am clearing and that's not even cut. Dangerous, dangerous, dangerous. Ooh, that could have been a disaster. Look at this line, it's not cut here. It's 
serenaded under my balcony. Yeah, right. Oh, if he calls our phone, I'm not going to get that. I do not answer the phone. I do not have a phone. I do not see the phone. There is no phone. Even Mokohankan has a phone number, but it's not on my desk. I don't even know where the phone is. It's probably on Ayano-san's desk. So phoning us is never going to work, or phoning me is never going to work, period, period. Throwing pebbles off the window. Been there, done that. <laughs> Been there. Been there and done that. So the lady in question, her bedroom is at one end of the house and her daughter's bedroom is at the other end of the house. <laughs> and then she was supposed to have left the door open and didn't. So the pebbles under the window. And my God, been there, done that. No serenading because we had to keep quiet. My God, she'd kill me if I talk too much about this. Whatever. This is a long, 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 long time ago. <laughs> the stories we can tell and the stories we can't tell. There's no such thing as a story you can't tell. Oh, yes, there is. And I'll, I can easily tell any number of stories about myself or stories that make me look cool or stories that make me look like an idiot. I don't care. I'll tell any of those stories. It doesn't make any difference. But I have to be really careful with other people's privacy. So when I say the stories I can't tell, it means there's other people involved in that story who would be extremely upset if I talked about this episode. So fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Someone's just changed their names. Yeah, like, right, change the name of my girlfriend. That's right. Nobody's going to know who it is. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> That's really helpful. So, <laughs> once a bell time, I knew this lady called us. Let's call her Sue <laughs> or something. That's really going to help change the story. <laughs> so. It's okay, not every story has to be told. There's enough stories out there, it doesn't matter. Oh, this must be Ayano-san, is it? Is that the time? It's 8.50. That's the time. She's really, she, because she has so much work to do, she's come four minutes early so that she can get through all the work today. <laughs> oh, so, 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 so. Yeah, best of intentions, the show. Come and say hello. Come. For those of you who don't know, this is Ayano-san. Our, she's our customer service lady. What's the best way? Whatever, whatever. I don't know. Well, well, if I, I don't know, I'm not even a manager. It's just tanto this kid, or tanto in English. I don't know. Oh, no, I think of you as the manager of the customer service department. I mean, it's only one person, but so whatever. <laughs> whatever. This is the lady who handles all the emails coming in and out. If you've ordered a print over the past few days and you just got our automatic email, not the regular email, over the next couple of days, and it's going to be too much for her to do today. So today and tomorrow and into Wednesday, she will be answering and replying to all the emails and the orders. So please hang on. Thank you very much. I know she's happy to have the work to do, but it really is at the moment, it's a bit overwhelming. And I speak from experience. It's fun to have the inbox full of orders. It really feels good. We love when people are ordering prints, but the, the stress that comes with this, you know, 
And the problem is if you do it too quickly, you start screwing up. Mm -hmm. Like there's one guy, there's a dude out there. He, he ordered five hunger club prints. Okay. The same print, luckily, and he wants it to be, them to be sent to five different people. Ooh. Now, that's okay. We know our system handles this. We know how to do this. And in fact, this is cool. He ordered the same print to five different people. The rough ones are when somebody orders five different prints to go to five different people, <laughs> and we're like, if I get this wrong, I'm in big trouble. So stuff like this. So, true, so, true. so, 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 all right, all right. so she'll be handling all this today and tomorrow um, and the day the after. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I'll, I'll okay. to anyway, no. So, but no rush. You heard right. me say this before. Mm -hmm. Take it slow. Please take it slow. Yeah. All right. Am I need get to work. Oh, <laughs> <don't like that. laughs> all right. Also, too, all the shop ones, I cleared all the shop stuff. I did it, Thank everything. And those, the shop stuff that needs shipping, mm -hmm. I put them up there, but they're all, those people are just traveling, so don't, we'll do those later. So sit with your own work first, and uh, we'll do that. Okay, flea market and luxury prints are... We've been, we've been pulling, yes, we've okay. pulled everything, of course. They're in a box here, absolutely. We've Perfect. pulled everything, so... Um, yeah. Okay, you thank you, Anu-san. Good, good. good, good. She's competent. She's so competent, you know. She's a cheerful person. She's not perfect. In the early days when she was here, there was mistakes, whatever. Everybody makes mistakes in a new job. But she is competent. I'm really happy. You know, really happy. And also, too, I, I, I could say this. It's okay. I'm really happy that we have really... The work culture thing happening here. You know, if this was a Japanese company, we put that thing out Friday night, Saturday morning, and there's no way that the Japanese company would have done it this way. We, she went home for two days because it's a weekend. She doesn't work weekends. But a Japanese company who had done this would have thought our primary responsibility is to our customers. We can't go two days without replying to them. So I, we either wouldn't send this on, on that time or the employee would have to work over the weekend. And no, thank you, we can do this, you know. When people bought something from the website over the weekend, they got the automatic reply, you know, saying that it's all in, we're good, we'll be back to you as soon as we can. And then now, two days later, or perhaps three days later, they're gonna get a reply from a human being. I think that's okay, you know, we're not Amazon. People know we're not Amazon. Was I out of line mentioning that person who ordered five prints? <laughs> so, <laughs> the, wor the world record. <laughs> I shouldn't say this. Well, it's okay. I guess what? We'll just keep quiet. I don't, yeah, ordering five prints. I don't, thank you. Thank you very much, sir. I don't, we like, you know, we think these make beautiful gifts, and other people are, are uh, on board with this. The world record is 50. Somebody ordered 50 prints. 25 of one and 25 of another to be sent to a number of people. And uh, because those, because that kind of event also happens, this is one reason why, you know, in our, in our emails, I started talking about these gift prints two months ago. And there were people who were perhaps a little bit, I don't know if upset's the right word, Back two months ago, in, in early September, I was talking about the gift seasons here and please get going. And I'm sure there are people out there, Dave, trying to sell Christmas gifts in September. Give me a break. And I really wanted to avoid that. But I'm up against the wall. You know, we get an order, we'll just come in like that. 25 of these, 25 of these send to those people. And if that came in today, I'm in trouble because we, we think we have enough stock, but I can't plan for 50 in order for 50. So this is another reason why we talk about this so early, and I know some of you don't like that, and there's nothing else I can do. I'm sorry, you know, just brush it off. I'm not trying to boost my wallet by 
Christmas and oh, we're just trying to avoid tragedies and disasters, you know. The order for five prints just now, no problem. They will leave this building this afternoon, tomorrow at the latest, you know, they're okay. But 50, it's a different story. You know, so. We're not Amazon. Time's okay, I guess, right? Okay, okay. Long comments here, whatever. What's this comment from the first time ch chat? M Mr. McFit. <laughs> Love the usernames, you know. Mr. McFitzy. <laughs> just a second. Is that a question? The long comment here? Just a second. Oh, thank you. Okay, it's a, it's a thanks comment. Okay, I'll read more carefully later on. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you for the comment. <laughs> so, <laughs> the the inspiration question, you know, I really uh, have made very mixed feelings about this. You know, very very mixed feelings. You know. I'm really happy that people look at our work and feel that this is an admirable thing, and people are enjoying and saying thank you. You're an inspiration. It's, of course, a very warm feeling for me. There's sometimes emails that, that are from people that would sort of like to be doing things like this, not specifically woodblock printmaking, but they have a goal and would like to do something, and they haven't been able to make it happen. And this is a very uh, interesting and deep and touchy subject, you know. I, I was able to, I was a salary man with a wife and two kids. I had a decent job but it wasn't a job that really felt like it was going to be something I wanted to do as a career. It was decent and it was useful to society, but it wasn't, I just, you know, if that's all I was ever going to do, I wouldn't have been happy. And I managed to, to pull off a transition, you know, jump, jumped into the, I jumped, planned and jumped and managed to pull off this transition, but I, I really want to avoid sitting here and saying to everybody, yeah, go follow your dream. You know, it's going to be really cool. You can do this and you too can enjoy this wonderful life, this future life that you've been dreaming about. Because I really don't know if it is something that I should tell people to try. You know, not everybody is actually capable. And I, this may really sound insulting. I'm sorry, you know. Not everybody would have the actual skill set required to... to to do like what has happened to me here in the past few decades. You know, it wasn't just a question of being able to make woodblock prints. There was a whole bunch of other skills required to, to make that transition from being a, a salaryman type person to becoming an independent worker. And now to, to the organization that we have here. And there's a, a lot of skills have been required along the way. You know, what I, I can't make a blanket statement to somebody, you too can do this, because maybe the, the person we're talking to maybe can't do this, I don't know. So I really am a bit torn, you know. I'm very happy that there is a model here that people can look, look at and study and see how much of what Dave's done can possibly apply to their own life. That's cool, that's good, but please think carefully, you know. Okay, the comment here, I haven't seen all the conversation, but there's a comment I'm just going to catch right now. I'm into such and such and such, but nobody knows about it nowadays because nobody wants to buy this stuff anymore. There isn't a big market for it. Okay, but there's two ways to look at this. You know, it's the old shoe salesman on the desert island story. We've told this same joke, this same story a hundred times on this stream. 
Okay, I'm not even going to tell it again. It's okay. The shoe salesman on a desert island. You can look it up if you want to think about it. But the fact that there's no market for something, it's not actually relevant because it's your job not just to make the product, it's your job to teach people about this product and to show it to them and to communicate your enthusiasm to them. And if you can do that, if you can be enthusiastic and communicate that enthusiasm, there's your market because other people will be in, become enthusiastic about it. So you don't need a pre-existing market for your thing. Maybe the best example might be, if you look at what we did for a subscription series this year, we made all our prints right this year in that little format with a bunch of little tiny prints five little tiny prints, and that's the monthly subscription. If that thing had been in the market, if people were walking through department stores and saw a little package there, five little prints, $50, nobody, 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 nobody would ever have picked it up and taken it to the cash register and bought it. There was no market for such a thing. It didn't exist. But here we are, we've 20 of us here have made a living this past year on that product. So the idea that there's no market for what I do I don't buy that. I'm sorry. I don't buy that. So John's got something. If there's no market and you create it, you're the get best guy. You're the top. You're the top producer. <laughs> now these are easy words. Okay, it's just easy to say this. But 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 there you are. You know. So I'm sorry. I'm not trying to just blow smoke. Hey, you can do this. You know, do your dream and you can do this because maybe it's not possible. I don't know. I'm just a little, whatever, I just want to put forward the idea that don't worry too much about it doesn't exist in the market already. And I, I think if I was a, a, what do you call it, inspirational speaker getting paid 20,000 bucks for standing in front of the crowd and giving everybody inspiration, I would put out the line that you are the man with the best chance because your market doesn't exist. It's going to be a wide open market. You create it and you're going to be the only guy in it. Go for it, is, you know, the inspirational speaker's approach to this. But the go for it implies that you have the skill set necessary to pull it off. Or that you know where to find other people who have the skills that you're missing. It's a fun, deep, interesting conversation, you know. It really is. It's one, it's one of, the, it's one of the, the main things that I would think about or, or in, in my entire life, you know. It's one of the deepest concepts that, that I've ever had to rub up against, you know. Society certainly needs a whole lot of people to be satisfied and happy in their jobs, whether they are, you know, you name it, a, a doctor or a bus driver or, or an accountant or whatever. Our society needs a whole bunch of people like this to be happy and comfortable in a normal type job. So it doesn't make any sense to say that everybody should quit being a worker and follow their dream. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. But what percent of us, some percent of us, don't feel comfortable in that position? Some percent of people want to just fly a little bit differently. I'm a bit nervous here. I'm chatting, chatting, chatting. And if I just chat too much and cut the wrong thing here, I am in trouble. Nine eleven. And somebody's saying, so the stress and responsibilities, that's also a different story. There are many, many, many factors involved in this. Many, many factors. So
it's chippy chippy green up here you know let's be careful it would be easy to chip something here and a part of the thing that makes this work pleasant you heard the sound the crunch crunch but part of the crunchiness here is this wood is brittle and especially when we have all these little we have all these little pieces that stick out and stick out and stick out and stick out and they are really easy to chip off especially when it's brittle so the crunch is pleasant for what it is but it's also it's also a warning be careful dave this is brittle I guess we're at show and tell time, are we? I, don't know. I have nothing specifically uh, special planned for today. We're going to continue on with our little black book. So there's no opening, no green tape, no package opening today. Let me just finish this little corner, that's all. Okay, let's get this off. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Someone says, are we gonna see your game in show and tell today? What do you mean, game, game? Oh, the toys. No, it's too, it's big. There's no way I can do it on this desk. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. But yeah, that would be a fun actually on, on one of our show and tells to do that, to pull out, push in. <laughs> it would indeed be fun. Point the camera at the floor. Yeah, but it's gonna need a bunch of setup. Let me let me keep the idea. It is a good idea. Thank you very much. I will see how to incorporate it. Just, I'm not set up for it right now. Lights, everything are in the wrong direction. So yeah, maybe mods, send me a note about this or something. Wow, I want my toys. <laughs> just wait, just wait. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, we're going through the Surimono albums. We finished album one, we finished album number two. We're moving along through album number three. These are prints that I made in 1998, 1999, the year 2000. This is the set from the year, no, no, wait. No, 1999, the year 2000, then the year 2001. This is the set from the year 2001. We've been through a few of these, one, two, three, four, five, six. We looked at these yesterday, what's next? A good one, a good one, a good one. And man, there's a story on this print. My God, I don't have the block, but there is a story on this print. Okay, this was uh, a reproduction of 
an original Sudimono print. I mean, the, the Sudimono albums were nominally about Sudimono prints. I think we're going to need the light for this one. So as much as possible, I tried to incorporate a number of original Sudimono reproductions. This one is, who's it by? It's Shun, not Shunsho. Katsukawa Shunsho was the, I don't know, was the uh, guy who designed the poet series that I made, but this is another person in the Shunsho school. So the original for this would have been about, uh, in fact, I don't need to talk about it because I've got it. Before the stream this morning, I went upstairs to one of my albums. We've seen this, actually. We worked through this little album some time ago. And in this album, somewhere here, I have, yeah, I have the original copy of this print. So we've seen this before on Show and Tell. Here's the original. It's Katsukawa Shun Sen. And this would be... Seventeen seventy, somewhere around seventeen seventy. The piece of paper you're seeing me holding, give me ten years. Seventeen sixty to seventeen ninety, somewhere around there. This is a print by Shunsen. This is the original Surimono. It's been folded in the middle because it came from a little booklet. So there was a bunch of prints all together. They were pasted at the outside edge and they folded up so that as you folded open the album, you could see each one. Then you would turn the page and see the next one, turn the page and see the next one. I've only got one of them. It's an expensive little item. It's well, well, well over 200 years old. And I liked it so much that I felt I wanted to make a reproduction of it. So I did. In my Surimono album for 2001, I took this print and I made a reproduction of it. Now mine, of course, obviously is white and bright and clean, and the old one being well over 200 years old is what it is. But I think I did pretty well with the reproduction here. I did the whole thing on boxwood, and it turned out to be a tragedy, and there's a big, big story behind it. To make a, I wanted to make it on boxwood because the delicate hairs, the delicate lines, everything about it is delicate. So I wanted to use boxwood. I didn't have a good hard piece of cherry. So Dave had a bright idea. And this is how dumb I am. I think I got a nice good IQ. I'm a smart guy, but sometimes I screw up so badly. I had a bright idea. Because I couldn't get boxwood this big, I would use a laminated piece. It would have one two, three strips of narrower boxwood, pasted down. I glued them myself to a base plate, dressed it off with my cabinet scraper, nice smooth surface, can't even feel, nope, can't even feel the joints. Let's go, and I carved it. Come printing time, this is a couple of weeks later, put the water on, get ready for printing, and the three strips of boxwood said, water, that's nice, I'd like to drink some water, and they all went, in different ways. So the top surface of this thing, which had been, I can't feel the joints, after carving, now became three, I forget even, one was under this way, one was over the other way, one was under this way. Customers, collectors, 200 people are waiting. I have two weeks before the first of the month to get this on the way. Disaster. I tried pulling it off, pasting them down again, you know, flattening them out by putting them on a moist piece of cloth or whatever. O absolute, ultimate, no possible disaster. So I just grabbed a piece of cherry wood from my stock and I used a piece of cherry wood this wide to make the print. This strip where the poem is, that piece of boxwood I just used as it was. I ripped it off the original block pasted it down on something, and I could print this by itself. So this is from the original version, and this is from round two, when I had to carve it again. And this story plays out a number of times in my, in my career. The autumn print, the Kiku no Kaori, the chrysanthemum print, I had to carve that one twice because I screwed up. 
So you see me on this Twitch stream sort of being a fairly competent printer here or a fairly competent carver. I've got 40 years of experience, but any number of times along the way, I have screwed up very, very badly. I'm pleased with this. This is very well done. What I also did quite well, I think, if you look at the colors here, this is vermilion and green. And these were from an era, what's the name of these prints? This is from an era when full color printing was not really a, a thing. Uh, they, had, they knew how to make colors, but there's a kind of prints called Beni Zudi E. Beni is red and Zudi is printing. And the prints were printed with black outlines and just with a color like this on top of them. And sometimes they used green. And this print harkens back to that era. Okay, before we move on to the next one, there's something else about this one that's kind of interesting. Look at this. This is the original version. And what do we see? We see vivid lines in the water here. And what they had done is they used a very thick paper and they used a cut a zitty block. All these white lines were carved and then printed with pressure into the paper as embossed lines. And over the years, as any number of people picked up this sheet of paper and touched it like I'm doing now, their thumb and fingers touch the top surface of the paper, but it doesn't touch the part that is embossed down. So what you see here is white lines. is simply you're seeing relatively clean paper here and the top of the paper has become smudged and dirty by 200 plus years of being manhandled. So Dave's version here, of course I did the same thing. My version also has embossed water. There it is, you can see it. But mine, because it's brand new and fresh and clean, the pale blue of the water is visible, but the bottom is the same color. So it'll take 200 years of rubbing like this before mine shows the same effect that the old one does. Whatever, win some, lose some. I myself can't enjoy the full beauty of this print. My kids and their kids and their kids and their kids. <coughs> Someone's asking, how did I trace it? I took the original, I got color photocopies of it. This is before we're using Photoshop here. I went to the copy shop, 400% enlargement, and took the original print here and I enlarged it onto, it would have been, I don't even remember, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pieces of large paper. Then I took them to my light table, which was a piece of table with an acrylic sheet with a light bulb below it, and I traced them onto a <coughs> large sheet of Gompi paper. That sheet of Gompi paper I then took to an architectural printing firm who have copy materials large enough for a piece that big, and they shrunk it down for me onto a single sheet of small gumpy paper. I'm very pleased. It turned out very, very, very well. And I was very happy to be able to pull this off. This is one of the prints that I'm most proud of. Bottom corner again. There's the original print. It's Shun Sen. And I don't know, I think it's Ka Shou Sai. Don't quote me, but I think that that is Ka for sure. I think it's Ka Shou Sai Shun Sen. But I'm not the best person to ask about that. Okay, 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 okay. Very happy with that one. But I think the collectors we're happy with it too. This also too, I think it's actually in our catalog because when we opened the Asakusa shop here, actually it is, I, I shouldn't probably say this because I know what's going to happen if I say this. I know, and we put it in our catalog. When we opened the Asakusa shop here, we didn't have enough prints to open up. So I took some of my back number prints and I took my leftovers from making the Surumanu albums and we put them in the shop here. And I think this print, actually, one of the ones left over from me doing it, I think is in our shop here. Our own printers have never yet reproduced it.
So I think that print I just showed you is, I think it's possible to buy here at Mokohankan right now. Maybe there's one copy left or two copies left, I don't know. What's next? Oh, okay, I have a problem. The next one also has a ton of stories. The next one has a ton of stories. We're out of time. Okay, let's do this. Hold, hold, hold. We'll just do one for right now. We'll just do this one for now. Next one coming up, let's save it for the next time. There's too many stories to just grab in one minute and I'll rush and I won't remember. And there's also something else I want to bring down from upstairs and show you. So let's hold the next one. Let's call it right there. And it's 9.30 anyway, it's 9.30. Also, I missed a chance. I saw this in the chat from two days ago, and I apologize for not seeing it and missing it. <clears throat> At 9 o'clock on the Saturday chat, two days ago, somebody posted at 9 o'clock, somebody hit the time, chat, the time I don't know, command, and they said, it's 9 o'clock, on a Saturday, and I didn't see it, and I didn't pick up the clue. <laughs> so whatever, <laughs> you have been warned. Today's Monday, next is Thursday, and two more days later it's Saturday. <laughs> Maybe somebody can remind me, whatever, <laughs> that it will be nine o'clock on a Saturday. <laughs> Strike. Okay guys, thanks very much. I'll see you in a couple, three more days. I'm off here now for three more days. I'll be back here Thursday morning with our next stream. Let's put up the outside. Microphones, Hontony microphones. <laughs> Let's get the outside up here. I'm hoping for a quiet Monday because the last few days have been, oh my God, the last few days. We just want nothing. Just please let me have a quiet Monday here. For those of you who don't know, this is the Oshibori delivery man. He is delivering the small hand towels to a group of local restaurants. They don't buy the towels. They rent them from these guys. He delivers them. Oh, that's Aoyama-san coming. He's going to walk upstairs. The guy delivers the towels cold. They use microwave ovens to heat them up to give them to customers and then they just dump them back, and this guy takes them back and does all the washing. And there you go. You got it. The regular crowd shuffles out. Thank you very much. I'll see you in a few more days. <laughs> and bye for now. It's been fun today. Thank you again. No mask, man. <laughs>